All right, welcome to the Chemisode exam walkthrough series. This will be the first Chemisode, which will be the 2017 VCE end of year chemistry exam. We're going to start with question one, and that's this one here. So let's get stuck into it, and I'll walk you through my thoughts on the actual question. I'm going to quickly glance through some of this stuff, and it's about making ethanol. So industrial eth industrially, ethanol is made by either two methods. One method uses ethene, which is derived from crude oil. The other method uses sugar, such as sucrose, which is this molecular formula here, and yeast in an aqueous solution. The ethanol produced from sucrose and yeast proceeds according to the following reaction. So we've got a beautiful reaction here. The first question asks us to determine the mass in grams of pure ethanol that would be produced from 1.25 kilograms, that's the mass, of sucrose dissolved in water. So obviously we need to, we're given the amount of sucrose and we need to find out our ethanol. So this is gonna be a stoichiometric question. So I'm gonna start off as I would always, and pretty much every single time I see a mass, I'm gonna find the number of moles of my sucrose, the stuff that I actually have. I'm gonna write it as number of moles equals mass over molar mass. And then I'm gonna put in my value. This is kilograms, so I'm gonna change it into grams. And I'm going to divide it by the molar mass, which luckily they have given to me here. So I don't need to work too hard on that one. I'll work out what that actually is, which is going to be uh, 1250 divided by 342 equals 3.565 mole. That's my number of moles of my sucrose. I know I need to get across here using this equation, so I need a ratio. My ratio, as I can see here really clearly, is one to four. So it's a ratio of one to four. So therefore my number of moles of ethanol equals four times 3.65. And if I simply go in here, I'm gonna times that by four. That gives me 14.62 mole. And then this is my mole of ethanol. Then I'm gonna go into my mass in grams. So my mass of Ethanol equals my number of moles times my molar mass, always writing out formulas as well. So 14.62 times by my molar mass of ethanol, which I know is 46. Um, if you don't know it, you can simply count up what you've got here, which is two 12s, a 16, and six ones. That's gonna give you a molar mass of 46. Ethanol is one of the ones that you use fairly often, so it's nice to kind of have some of these in your knowledge bank. Um, so that's times 46, which is going to give you 672.5 grams of ethanol. One thing I need to do now is double check my significant figures. So I'll go back through the, my, um, my question and work out how many significant figures I probably should round this to. So this one's got four significant figures in it. This one's only got three. So what that means is I should be rounding this to three significant figures. So I'm going to take that and it's gonna be 673 grams. And that's gonna be my answer for that one. Moving on to part B. Complete the reaction by writing the formula for the reactant in the box below. Now, obviously what's happening is I've got my ethene, which is then going converting into my alcohol. So this is looking at my reaction chemical pathways. Being this one, it's a double bond. So what do I need to add to it? It's simply gonna be H2O. Um, it's probably any gas in this case here because I know that this reaction from my chemical pathways occurs with the catalyst, which is H3PO4, and th about 300 degrees Celsius um, is the, re the conditions that this reaction happens with. Because we're breaking our double bond, what's my next question? To classify the type of reaction, we're breaking a double bond, so this will be an addition reaction. Um, you guys should know um, many types of reactions, and obviously breaking a double bond here is considered an addition reaction. Moving on across the page, we've got two more sections. Um, the ethanol can be converted into ethanoic acid by reagent X. This is a pretty clear, um, a good one that you should know from your reaction pathways as well. We're looking at dichromate, uh, dichromate, Cr2O72 negative, and in an acidic environment. This probably should be aqueous, and aqueous as well for our states, for our um, reagents but definitely dichromate and acidified um, solution of dichromate. You could also take 
um, MN04 negative and H positive as well, that would be a reasonable reagent to use to convert the ethanol into ethanoic acid. Ethanoic acid is used in the production of esters. Write a balanced chemical equation for the reaction between ethanoic acid and propanol using semi-structural formula. Again, remembering that we have semi-structural formula, um, we're looking at propanol, so therefore let's start making this. We're going to start off with our reactants, which are pretty straightforward. It's written, given to us, C-O-O-H plus the ch 3 ch 2 ch 2 oh being one propanol or propan one -ol. This is going to form our ester. Esterification reactions as well, remember, are condensation reactions. So we're going to have plus H2O over here regardless. Now, I need to think about how this is actually going to form. Now, our ester is going to form from these guys and reacting with this one here. So therefore it's going to be CH3, C double O, because we've got this, if I just do it out here, C, so this is going to be what my ester is going to look like, um, ethanoic acid, my propanol. So therefore if I look at this, it's going to be CH3, C double O, then it's going to be my propanol here, CH2, CH2, CH3. Um, and that's going to be my semi-structure um, reaction. Remembering that I do have my um, high my water over here. The IUPAC name for this ester product. Esters are named from the alcohol and the carboxylic acid. So I'm going to be writing propyl because it came from propanol and eth and no eight. Remember the ic from my acid becomes eight in my ester, and my um, alcohol is my first part there. So that's the first question done. Looking at that, I'm pretty happy with that question. It didn't challenge me too much. Um, couple of tricks in here. Obviously, remembering every time you see a mass, you convert that into mole. Whenever doing mole calculations, please look at the notation that you're doing. Make sure you write out what you're finding the number of mole of. Write out the formula you're going to use. Do all that before you use your calculator. That's a really, really important thing to do. Another thing when you're using your calculator, don't clear your answers. Continue on with your answers. So each time I did this question, I simply just did multiply by, I did found this, then I pr pressed times by four. Then I said times by 46. You can clearly see what's happening in here. As soon as you start um, writing in these numbers into your calculator, you're going to start truncating and it's not going to work as well for you. You might get slightly different answers to what the actual answer will be. So the calculation part there, really important. Again, with calculations, the final step should be looking through at the values you've used and looking for significant figures to work out. Do I need to round because I can't be as accurate as I have written it here? Um, so that's about it. Hopefully that has helped you and I'll look at doing the next question very shortly.